What is up everyone? So last time you saw me, we cut the radio support off of my new S14 Silly, right? It was so heavily damaged from a previous accident, we figured replacing it was actually better than repairing it. So I got a front clip, we cut it off, and now it is time to get it ready to weld back on. And while there's quite a bit of prep work involved, and I already filmed a little bit of it, so check it out. What we have to do is get this surface all cleaned up and ready to go. As you can see, we have some rust to deal with and we also have to knock down the metal that is left over from the previous MIG welds. As you can see, they're raised above the surface. So we're gonna have to grind all of these down until it's smooth without digging into the material because this isn't really that thick to begin with. So we're starting off with a 50 grit disc right here. We're gonna use this exclusively to knock down the MIG welds and get it smooth with the surface. So now all the MIG welds are grounded down and we're left with quite a bit of rust. Now, instead of using the 50 grit to attack the rust, we're gonna use something less abrasive. We're gonna be using this waffle cone wheel. This doesn't cut into metal nearly as aggressively as a 50 grit. So we're gonna use this because we are trying to conserve as much material as possible since it's so thin and we really just have to knock off the surface rust. So let's get rid of it. So the backside cleaned up pretty good. There's no more rust, it's nice and smooth, ready to have a nice mating surface to the chassis. But since it was MIG welded, the front side of the panel also has some raised edges and some rust, so we're gonna handle that real quick. But I'm gonna use some YouTube magic for this one. Boom, we are good to go. This side looks great. This side also looks fantastic. So the rough prep on the radio support is good to go. All the rust is off, all the surfaces are clean where it attaches. We still gotta do a bunch of paint prep stuff on there, but for now, that is good to go. Now the last piece of the puzzle here is cleaning up the surface on the chassis. So since this was the original radiator support, there's not MIG welds on there, they were spot welds. So there's no rays in the surface. It's nice and smooth. So we just have to clean this up, get it all bare metal, and we should be good to go. So Brian just showed up and uh, we actually had a couple breakthroughs. So he welded them up real quick and grounded them down just so we have that nice look to it. Now, today we are going to be attaching the radio support, correct? Yep, we're gonna glue them together. Glue no. them together. <laughs> so there is basically two uh, ways of doing so, right? We could either do like a MIG weld or a plug weld or we could do a f spot weld like the factory, correct? Exactly. Now a MIG welder, 99.99% .99 of you guys if you wanna do something like this at home, that's what you have to be using. Exactly, <laughs> um, because a spot welder is extremely expensive. So the process of doing the MIG welder is pretty easy, right? The, uh, yeah, you can pretty much just drill or punch a hole and then you kind of weld through to the next panel and around a little bit and there you go, they're fused together. That's it, they're attached. Yeah, the tricky part is you wanna um, clamp them together as tight as possible mm -hmm. so that it gives you the best chance of preventing corrosion. So the spot welder like from the factory does the clamping for you. Exactly. You, it squishes the panel together and it applies a lot of pressure and heat through electricity mm -hmm. and bam, your two panels are welded. Fused together. together. Yeah. And it, it's nice because it leaves, where can we find one of these? So it just leaves a nice little dimple just like that that looks super clean and it's not this raised weld like a MIG welder. Yeah, it's going to look exactly like all these ones. Which is what you want. I mean, whenever you're repairing a car, the goal should be to... Look as OEM. Yeah, be pre-accident condition. Right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so we do, we do have to do two plug welds on this, though. Okay, we do. Because the factory, they installed these panels after these panels, or they welded this to that before all of this. Yeah, yeah, so, so right gotta... here, because there's a panel here and a gap, we're going to have to do two plug welds. There we go. So we were planning on actually doing plug welds from the beginning, just so we can show you guys how to do it, mainly at home, because I know... Like Bryce said, 99% of you guys don't have a spot water, but we are very fortunate because our neighbors, Innovative Restoration, uh, said we could use their spot welder. And if someone offers a spot welder to use, we're gonna use it, especially on a call like this that should really look as OEM as possible. Yeah, I mean, nothing else has been butchered together. 
It's not yet. No. <laughs> so uh, we will show you guys that process later on, but for now we got a little bit more prep to do. Uh, and what's that? Right, there's some bare metal going on where we, or Jimmy really cleaned up all these welds. Um, so the layers that are gonna be attached, right? So this will be butt up against that. You can't just have it bare metal to bare metal, right? Yeah, it's gonna rust. It's gonna rust. 100%, guaranteed. Can't have that. Um, so we're gonna use an E-coat primer. E-Z coat? Yeah, not that color, but whatever. Yeah, um, I got them all. The spot welder can weld through paint, no problem. Mm -hmm. In between layers. The only thing the spot welder requires is that the outside where the two electrodes touch is bare metal. So pretty much on this side, we're ready to go, done. Okay, perfect. This side, we'll DA it up real quick, get rid of some of these grinder marks and put some uh, E-coat primer. Well, I grabbed three different OEM color of E-coats, right? Like if you ever pop open your trunk and you see some non-painted panels, you'll see maybe one of these colors, right? Yeah. Very exactly. common. We have olive, tan, and gray. What are we doing? Green. No, <laughs> I'm, pre I'm no, pretty sure gray. this one's gray. It is. I mean, you get a little green of it. We're, we're, we're going to use gray, all right? Yeah, not gray. Gray. We're definitely going to use gray. A little dirt, maybe green. <laughs> Olive green, I will say, is the most popular color. For sure. Your car is probably olive green. All right, Tony, pretend like you know what you're doing. Ah. Nothing. <laughs> all right, after sanding for what always feels like forever, all the surface is prepped over there for the e-coat, and then we're just getting this thing all cleaned up before we put it on, save us some work in the future. Also starting with a clean slate, because obviously eventually this was getting painted too. Brian Hall trick, Windex and scotch Bright. <laughs> Yeah, it gets all the road grime off. While also prepping the surface, so it works pretty well. These JDM cars do have a lot of road grime too, so. If we didn't have to prep this to use razor support, this whole process would have been so fast. This is how they do it at the dealership, you know? <laughs> right outside on the dumpster. All right, it's prepped, it's clean. So is this. Spray the e-coat. Let it bark. There we go. Yeah. Look at that, looks just like factory. Eco does have a nice OEM look to it though, I'll tell you that. Like we said before, this is going to be the layer that's attaching to the chassis so we can't have any bare metal. Yeah. Look at that, love it, love to see it. There I always go. like to use a piece of cardboard. It's uh, quick, quicker and easier than masking and honestly, like if you tape this off here, you'd end up with a hard line. So. Yeah, this lets you feather the paint out. Exactly. Like the OEM would. Exactly. All right, first like real test fit right here. Hey, this ain't even gonna be a test fit. This is going right on. Oh. Right. <laughs> see the factory has this alignment mark. That's so nice. And you can see how we're pushed up real nice and tight. This is all flush here, and the alignment mark is exactly where it's supposed to be. So that is so cool. How's that line up over here? Dude, not Bing. bad at all for how squished this thing I'll was. Take it. That is so badass, dude. That lined up like nothing. That's it. Butter done. <laughs> Look at that. Ship it. Those line up good down there. Oh yeah. Love to see it. All right, so bro, you want to do the plug weld first, right? Yeah, it actually, it helps with the spot welder so that these two panels are grounded together. One thing I like to do with plug welds is always clean up your eco or your weld through primer, whatever it is that you're using. Bam, melted. Oh, that was beautiful, dude, nice work. Oh yeah, that was a beautiful one, dude. Nice work. All right. Sure. Now they're uh, officially attached. That's it. Take it for a drive down the road. <laughs> <laughs> All right, boys, it's time. Let's get this thing over to Innovative. What's nice though, once we get there, this should go very fast. Oh yeah. Head it hard, Ant. Oh God, we're picking up speed. Run, boys. Oh, no, my phone's gonna fly out of my Because it doesn't have a welded diff for once. I'm happy I get to play filmer right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, since we're talking about welded diffs, I feel like I got so many comments. Don't drift this one, Jimmy. I'm not gonna drift this one. You guys see, keep thinking I'm gonna drift the Kuki, and I hope I don't disappoint people. I say I'm not gonna drift the Kuki. Ah, there's no winning. This one's not getting drifted. Look at it. It's 
beautiful. It's just, I'm happy that I have secured a beautiful streetcar Zanke. So you guys have seen this place before. We spot welded the coupe's roof on in here and we also painted the coupe in here. Right in that booth. The car looks so good in here. The lighting's so nice. So here it is. This is the, uh, the spot welder. The Pro Spot i4. <laughs> Talk about it. Let's hear about it. Come on. Uh, it's a good welder. It's kind of old, but still very relevant. Uh -huh. So check it out, right? This is what we're working with right here. So this pin comes out and squeezes the panel super tight, and then with a the current, welds the two panels together. So they actually have different arm attachments on here to go around certain panels. Like if you are doing like the inside of a trunk or something, you have to go around the whole panel. There's some crazy shapes here. Yeah, exactly. That's if you have to go from like the inside of a trunk to the taillight pocket, this would be the, the right arm to use. Get them all done with this guy today. So as you guys saw, we put this in place at the other shop. The bolts right here are holding the corners in place. We have the bolts down there and we have the welds right there. So I think you're ready. Yeah, I'm gonna do a, a small weld at kind of a lower voltage right now just to make sure we're all good. Be good. Yep. That's it. That is it, buddy. OEM fresh, baby. About, uh, what, 28 more to go? <laughs> I think you're right, yeah, something like that. Get in the right spot there. Ooh. Some of them pop pretty crazy, but these have been pretty clean so far. Nice and clean, nice and clean. <laughs> yeah, sometimes they get a little spicy. <laughs> Check that out. Just like OEM, that looks beautiful. So it is officially attached. So now it's time for the test. Do the test. Let me see. No, no, maybe you should do the test. Come on, no, I want to, I want somebody else to check my work. All right, all right, ready? Oh, she's on there, dude. Quick little pull, quick little push. It's probably <laughs> the straightest S chassis in the whole shop now. <laughs> that ain't going nowhere. That ain't going nowhere, that's for sure. All right. Wow, dude, this thing looks beautiful. The car looks so straight. Where'd Ann get an ice cream cone? This kid for real, he, he didn't bring us back any. And so inconsiderate. <laughs> the and other way. It's a car again. I love to see it. Oh, okay. Hands on the brakes. <laughs> nice work, boys. Cheat code. Hold the camera. Don't gotta push the car. <laughs> this is how all SRs run. Oh, shut up, RJ. <laughs> All right, so it is officially attached. Now what we have to do next is seal up the bare metal because we have quite a bit of it. We don't want to see it rust. And then when it comes to paint, we're still trying to figure out what we want to do because right now it's not worth painting the whole entire engine bay since the motor probably will be out in a few months. If you guys know Nissans, you know that they don't, they don't ever clear coat the engine bay. If it's a pearl white, they don't put any pearl on nope. it. But when you take one of these cars and you do the whole engine bay pearl white, it looks really it nice. It looks so hot. So I'm thinking we might just like, get this whole thing one color and kind of just do a quick little blend, not try and make it look like a show car for now, get it sealed up, make it look half decent, give us a good foundation so when we pull the engine out, it's easy to give it a scuff and shoot. Yeah, real easy. Honestly, an engine bay like this to make it look really, really nice mm -hmm. takes very little work, so. Because it is, it is just such a nice, such a nice car. All right, we're gonna keep going? We're we gonna we... feather this stuff out and put some e-coat on it or what? Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> Alright, 
so the old paint that was on it was actually pretty pretty nasty stuff so it was a pain in the ass to get off but we smoothed it all out now we're going to scotch fry all the existing stuff just so it has a nice mechanical bond for the new paint uh, so it sticks real well we don't have to worry about that but we're almost there almost there you know if you're going to be real lazy and just spray paint your engine bay at least scotch fry it first that shit ain't sticking if you don't Surface. We are smooth, sanded, prepped, clean, de-rusted, all of the above. Now, we're gonna be using spray cans. We're not necessarily spray painting an engine bay right now. What we're using is we're using E-Coat to seal up the bare metal and to give us a great foundation for when we go to actually paint the thing, it's way less work. Yeah, I mean, honestly, we're cheating a little bit. For sure. By finishing the white E-Coat, but our plans are to paint this engine bay. This Don't do what I do, right? <laughs> <laughs> do as I say, not as I do. Yeah, do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, this is just to get the car back on the road so I can enjoy it for like the next month. And I, that's a huge dragonfly. Um, for the next, <laughs> so I can enjoy it for the next month or so um, before it gets cold because winter's coming fast. All right, spray away, Bri. Uh, I'm gonna use the gray first to cover all the bare metal because it's exactly what the factory did. Love that. Like in layers, yep. the gray went down first. Oh, for sure. Right? So I'm going to do that first, and then I'm going to actually kind of try to blend out the white and make it look factory. Love that. I'm going to bring my color kind of all the way up this rail. See how, you know, just to blend into the old gray. That way when I do the white, you, you, know, you won't even know. Adam, your chair does great for B-roll, buddy. <laughs> Smooth rolling. You don't even need a dolly. Okay, call me Mike Devine. Oh, Miata. Nice factory eco blend right there. Now it's time to cover it in some white. Mm. Wait a second, let it dry. The exact right white, probably gonna be a little too bright, but. Just like factory, and we do this. What's up? Looks great. It's better than mine. <laughs> <laughs> That's definitely brighter. Very. But at least it looks like it's part of the car now. Little filter on that, you won't even know. All right, the paint's dry, and obviously it's a little bit brighter than the rest of the engine bay. It's dirty paint, it'll get dirty, it'll match a little bit better, but obviously like we talked about this is just temporary to get it sealed up in the meantime. So, now that there's actually paint on it, it is kind of mind boggling at how good this came out. Like, we took the OEM type of procedure, right? And well, it came out looking OEM, and it's beautiful. Like, you would, you would have no idea this was replaced. The only giveaway is down here, you can see obviously we have the big weld there and then there's like an extra spot weld in the back. But besides that, like no one would ever realize that this thing was replaced and that's pretty freaking cool. I mean, that's the whole, that's the, always the goal, right? And this thing is perfect again. This whole front end is beautiful. The whole car is beautiful. So it, it it's good to have the reader support up to par with the rest of the car. So Brian killed it. We all learned a lot and uh, it's definitely cool to see something like this get saved so quickly. So uh, we got a lot of work to put back together. We have a lot of good pieces for it, but I'm excited because uh, now we can get to it. So, oh man, that's so freaking cool. What do you think, buddy? Did you learn a lot? I actually did learn a few tips and tricks from B Hall. Yes, sir. We're still going to probably line the whole inner arch with some underbody or some sealer to uh, really time capsule this car. Um, but this is just the beginning. Step one of this build, right? So. Feels really good. So uh, I'm gonna stop talking because I'm just gonna ramble on from here. So you guys know the deal. Like, comment, subscribe. Stay tuned for more content. And Tony, have a good night.